Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this photographic typography and I'll be doing this using the latest version of GIMP which is GIMP 2.10.4 at the time of this tutorial. And so as you can see here we've got a, a piece of text here and then we've got this hummingbird that is like seemingly popping out of the text and then we've got a gradient background here and this is a fairly easy technique to do but it creates a pretty awesome result as you guys can see. But of course, before we get into that, I want to direct you guys over to our website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. We've got tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here as always, as well as Project Translate, GIMP playlists, and of course our poll of the week results, so definitely check that out. And you can also enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher, which is a bestseller on Udemy. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description. All right, so to start, I need to go ahead and open up the photo of the hummingbird, which I downloaded from Pixabay for free. And of course, I'll include a link to that in the description. So I'm gonna come over here to my file explorer and right click and just go to open with and choose GIMP or GNU Image Manipulation Program, which is what GIMP stands for. And so that's going to go ahead and open up our image into GIMP. So the first thing I wanna do is add transparency to my image. So to do that, just come over to your main layer, right click and go to add alpha channel. And now your image will have transparency behind here. So what that does is it allows us to erase the background and have this be transparent behind our main object, which is our hummingbird. So there's a few ways to delete a background in GIMP and there's not really one right way. It really depends on your preferences. What I like to do is grab the paintbrush tool and use a layer mask and that way it's non-destructive and you can uh, delete the background that's behind your main object and you can bring that background back at any time. That's what makes it non-destructive. Or some people prefer to use the paths tool and uh, just create nodes around our object. I think that's a little bit more tedious, takes a little bit more time. Uh, so I'm just gonna use the uh, method that I prefer which is using a layer mask. So I'm gonna right click on here and go to add layer mask and under initialize layer mask two, I'm gonna choose white full opacity and click add. And I'm gonna make sure I have my paintbrush tool selected. And then I can click this icon here to bring up black and white if you don't already have that as your foreground and background color. So anytime you paint black on a layer mask, it's going to act as an eraser. So as you can see, as I paint black on this layer mask, it's erasing uh, basically the background of our image here. What makes this non-destructive is if I switch over hitting X on my keyboard to white, I can paint anything back in that I want to, so that's what makes it non-destructive here. I can just paint uh, stuff back on the layer mask. But I'm gonna switch back over to black and just go ahead and erase this background. And I can grab the zoom tool and zoom in and then grab my paintbrush tool and I can decrease the size slider here to uh, decrease the size of my paintbrush. I can also use the left and right brackets on my keyboard and that allows me to get into the more detailed parts here. And I always keep the hardness around 50 just because it allows for the edges to be a little bit uh, fuzzy basically or feathered. And that uh, allows us to be able to paint in a little bit closer without being too exact, without having to be exact. And so I've already completed this process over here. So here is the finished uh, hummingbird without a background. And you can see I've got the layer mask on here. So once you've erased the entire background of this hummingbird, go ahead and go to file new and create a new composition. So I'm going to do 1920 by 1080 and then under advanced options I'm just going to choose 72 pixels per inch as the resolution just because I only need this for the web. If you need it for print go ahead and keep it at 300. And I'm going to choose fill with background color because I want this to be white. If you want it to be transparent you can choose transparency but I'll stick with background color for now and click OK. And so I'm going to grab my zoom tool and hold control and zoom out just so we have the entire canvas here. And you can go ahead and just sort of frame this a little bit closer if you want with the zoom tool. And I'm gonna come over here to our hummingbird and I'm going to click on this tab and drag it over and then just hover over our canvas here and then release the mouse. And so now you'll see we have our hummingbird dropped into this new composition here. You'll see there's some parts that I missed here when erasing the background. So I'll just grab my eraser tool and I'll use the brackets on my keyboard to increase the size and I'll just erase any of these little specks here that I missed. And so now I need to scale this layer and I'm gonna do so by grabbing the scale tool in the toolbox. And I'll click on our layer here. I'm gonna change this to percent. And I'm going to keep in mind the percent we changed this by because we're gonna also have to uh, do this a second time later on. So let me just go ahead and decrease this a little bit. 
and I'm going to go with 85%. So we typed 85 for the width and then we hit the tab key and this will automatically adjust to the uh, height, which is 84.98%. And I'll go ahead and hit scale. So keep that in mind. We're going to need that in the future. But next what I'm going to do is grab my text tool and the font I chose for this is Cambria Math and this is a built-in font in GIMP. And I'll click on the uh, canvas here and I'll just type the letter H with my caps lock key on to make sure this is an uppercase letter. And then I'll click on this, double click to uh, select the text and just go ahead and increase this until I get the size we want. And so maybe around uh, 1075, let's try that for now. And actually I'm just going to move this hummingbird layer to the top, click on this, turn my caps lock key off and type in hummingbird just to rename this. And we just want the hummingbird to fit inside the H here. So we want the H to be big enough for basically the head and the beak to just perfectly fit inside of this H, which it looks like it does. So I'm gonna stick with 1075 for the font size. And I'm going to click on the text layer here. I'm gonna hide the hummingbird layer just momentarily. And I'll grab my alignment tool and click on this text layer and just go ahead and center align this. That way it's in the center of our composition. And now I can unhide the hummingbird layer and go ahead and move this so that it fits within the text again. All right, once I've done that, I need to bring in the original hummingbird layer. So go ahead and open up that hummingbird composition again real quick. So go to open with and choose GIMP again. And that'll open this up uh, brand new before we erased anything. Just make sure you right click and add the alpha channel again. And now I'm just going to click and drag this into our composition. And so now we have our original image in here. And now we need to scale this down. So I'll grab my scale tool, click on this. And remember we scaled this down to 85%. So let me change the unit to percent. And then I'll just choose 85 for that, hit tab. And this will automatically scale to 84.98. And if I click on this center uh, group of squares here, I can move this so that this aligns with uh, the hummingbird here. And by the way, I have the image opacity here set to 61.8%. All you gotta do is drag the slider here to adjust the opacity of the preview. And that way you can see what's going on below. So I'll align that right there and hit scale. And now I want to move this below the hummingbird. So let me go ahead and change this to original image just so we can differentiate it. And you can't see the uh, hummingbird here because it's aligned with this uh, layer below it. And the better you align this layer, by the way, uh, the better this is going to look in the end. So now what I'm gonna do is cut out our original image so that it is in the shape of this H that we created, this text. And so to do that, I'll right click on the text and go to alpha to selection. And then I'll click on our original image here and go ahead and hit control I to invert this or command I on a Mac. And then I'll hit the delete key on my keyboard and that's going to delete everything outside the lettering. And I'll go to select none. And now we've gone ahead and deleted all of the image that is outside the text on this original layer, uh, this original image layer. So if I hide the hummingbird layer, you'll see this is what it looks like. So let me go ahead and unhide that. Now I wanna add my background gradient. So I'll click on the background layer. And now I'm gonna come over here and choose my foreground and background color. So I'll click on the foreground here. And I've already got these colors that I wanna use uh, preset in here. So you can go ahead and copy the HTML notation right here and I'll click okay. And then for the background color, I'll choose this other color here. Again, you can copy the HTML notation and I'll click okay. And so I'm gonna grab my gradient tool and I'm going to make sure the gradient is set to foreground and background RGB right here. And then the shape I want set to radial. And so I wanna go ahead and draw this gradient from the center of my image. So I wanna create a center guide. So I usually pull a center guide from the rulers here and then align it using the alignment tool. But I'll show you guys the alternative method that was pointed out to me, which is going to image, guides, new guide by percent, change the direction to vertical, and then type in 50% for the position, which by default it'll be at 50%, and go ahead and click OK. And that'll go ahead and create a center guide here. And we can do that again. So image, guides, new guide by percent. I'll change the direction to horizontal and click OK. And now we've got center guides going horizontally and vertically on our image. So now I can click and drag this from the center. And I wanna go ahead and reverse these colors. So I'll hit the arrow right here and that'll reverse our colors. 
and then just grab the move tool and that will go ahead and apply our gradient. And so now we have a perfectly centered radial gradient on our image. So I'll hit control shift T to hide those guides. And you can see there's another part here that we missed. So I'm just going to come back here to our hummingbird layer, grab my eraser tool and just make sure we erase that. And really any specs here that maybe we've missed. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna do is change the color of the text here. So I'll click on the original image layer and go to colors, colorize. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this color here and I'm going to click and drag this bar right here down until we get more of a gold color. Right about there. And I'll click okay. And then I'll just click okay again. So now I wanna add a drop shadow to this layer. So I'm gonna make sure I'm still on my original image layer. I'll go to layer, layer to image size. And that'll make the size of this original image layer the size of our composition. And then I'll go to filters, light and shadow, drop shadow. And that's going to add a drop shadow underneath our H. I'm gonna go ahead and change the offsets here to zero. So I'll just select the number here and type in zero. And as long as this chain link icon is linked, that'll uh, shift the Y to zero as well. And then I can adjust the blur radius of this so I can turn it up a little bit. And then I can also turn the opacity up a little bit to make it a little bit more prominent. And I can preview before and after and click okay. And the last thing I'm gonna do is click on this hummingbird layer, grab my eraser tool, turn the size of this up, and then turn the hardness of my brush down a little bit. And I'm just going to blend this in a little bit here, just cause I don't want this to be too prominent here, the edges of this, just because the wing is moving a little bit so it is a little bit blurred. And maybe the tail as well. And there we go. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com and you can enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher, which is a bestseller on Udemy. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.